Second Edges chapter 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechach Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four legs scattered abroad. All right, on the Brother Tides of War, back at you again with another lesson. I'm in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 9. It says, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. All right, now this is Yahweh speaking to Edris and telling Edris what shall befall the Lord's people in the latter days. All right, well, let's say the last days. Okay, now according to 2nd Ezra 6, you read that uh, Jacob is up next that follow. Okay, he held the hill of Esau. Which, which really is symbolic of him taking Esau out of power. So we know that we in the end of the world, okay, because Esau, Edom, is ruling. And we see also the Lord's prophecies being fulfilled. Yahweh Bashem Yahushai has sent forth his prophets bedtime, all right, week in, week out, in season, out of season, okay? Let me say every day of the week, there's videos being uh, put up. All right, for those of the hopeful elect to take heed and for also the rest to be warned or condemned. All right, so this is 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. It says, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Which are you Israelites, starting with the two thirds, because the Lord have, you know, uh, he's, he's numbered his people to a number. And you, when you read in Zechariah 13, 8, 9, you have the one-third and you have the two-third, all right? The one-third is what he kept to himself, which was tried and made white. And then you have two-thirds, which were destroyed through the fire, all right? And the Lord is telling Edris that then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. You have also certain men of the circumcision, all right, which in these different camps, their leaderships, leaders who sold out, you know, you got men teaching all sorts of crazy doctrines and they don't care, all right? It says, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Now, when you look up the word despite, all right, quick Google search, it says, without being affected by, in spite of, so when the Lord prophets speak, two thirds of the Lord's people, they're not affected by it. They don't take heed to it. It doesn't, you know, make them tremble. You know, Paul said, we know the terror of the Lord. We persuade men. So they're not being persuaded. And, and that's according to the Lord's moving. All right. You have the two thirds. You have the one third. Now it says without being affected by in spite of. So they despite, they dis, what was it to say? They despitefully, uh, it says, and they have cast them away despitefully, shall dwell in torments. Now, we can see that, uh, that, uh, we're clearly in the, in the beginning time of Jacob's trouble. Like, yeah. All right, we can clearly see that we're in a time of Jacob's trouble. And you can clearly see that Edom is going to come down having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. And he's going to force these vaccines. He's going to force RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, as the Bible prophesies about. And you can see it's the news reports on famine. The food is coming. So anyway... It says, uh, let me go ahead and go into uh, torment. Now, the word torment just means um, the inflicting of torture. All right. So it's great torture is coming. All right. You know, how much more us brothers who believe, you know, and uh, giving our bodies as a living sacrifice, 
you know, uh, unto death. How much more those that don't believe. It says the affliction of torture. Also the state of great suffering, pain, distress. So we're going into a time which is Jacob's trouble. And it says a state of great suffering. So great suffering is coming. All right. Pain, distress. All right. Imagine not eating food and, and drinking water, not having refuge, you know, and being that it's getting cold. We do have the understanding of, of what's going to go down and when it does. All right. So when it happens, it happens. We know to call upon Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. So it says, then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. So you're going to. Grieve, man. You're going to be in a grievous, uh, you're going to be set forth to a grievous death. It says, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. It says, and they that have lofted my law while they had yet liberty. And this is true liberty. All right. The Lord, you know, easing our captivity up so that we may worship him once again. You know, so that the prophets may prepare the way for Yahweh Shai. Just like John the Baptist did for Yahweh Shai when Yahweh Shai came on the scene. Okay? It says, And then, and they that have lofted my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. All right? They despised it. It says, The same must know it after death by pain. So, in order for you to get this truth, you're going to have to die on this side. Because once you die, your spirit goes back up to the Heavenly Father. And what? You're going back to your right, your right mind. And when you'll be coming back out, we'll, we'll be in the kingdom. You're going to be in your right mind. All right? So in order for you to get this truth, it says the same must know it after death by pain. And this is why it's very important for us brothers who are knowing to, uh, to uh, seek mercy from Yahweh Bashi and Shai. You know? It says, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, because it's not our, you know, it's not up to us, you know, to be waiting and watching to see what person is going to be punished for what they've done. All right. We, it's too much for us to, it's too much work for us to even to know about ourselves. You know, we have to work on ourselves. If I'm saying that right, it's too much uh, work to be done for ourselves to be work than to be worried about someone else being destroyed and, and when, okay? When the Lord destroyed the wicked, he destroys the wicked. It says, and therefore be not, not, be not thou curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. And know why it's important to inquire uh, how the righteous is gonna be saved? Because that takes work, all right? Hard work, dedication, all right? Fighting in the spirit, you know? You mainly fighting yourself, you know? Your thoughts and things like that, especially when you're freshly coming into this thing. You know, you're being taught the right way, finding out the ways to, uh, of salvation. Matter of fact, the scriptures say, give diligence to make our calling, thou calling and election sure. So giving diligence, you know, uh, means to put your hand to the plow, you know, to work. And also there's a word, uh, it means persistent. And, uh, also, and persistent means to, uh, uh, I go to continue to exist. So, you know, diligent is a, a great word to describe the, the, the work, you know, that has to be done and especially, uh, enduring. You know, all the way to the end, as Yahweh Shai said, he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. So, Lord willing, I hope this lesson is edifying. Uh, I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rakakodash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.